Well, a hospital port has pride and dignity stopped the New World Order. Welcome to Hapanwo TV. Um, I'm at a lovely place, actually, today. I'm at the Barge Inn, which is at Honey Street, Wiltshire. Listen, this is an absolute... This, this place will require no introduction if a, you, you're a UFO fanatic or anything like that because it's very very famous it's this very famous pub here at uh, honey street near alton barns supposedly one of the most spookiest places on earth and it's certainly one of the most beautiful i mean there's these lovely uh, hills behind us which is where the ridgeway runs along and this is one of the most esoteric areas imaginable um i'll be exploring a bit more about like this area later but um i'm here for the bases at the barge conference which is a uh, I'm um, here. This is Johnny's here. This is Hello. Johnny, <laughs> who we spoke to just now, or maybe later. It depends how I edit this. But um, it's the most remarkable place, um, and this is like the centre of the crop circle world, and also the UFO fraternity as well. Um, and we go along here. Just have a quick look, because um, it's basically a conference organised by the Basis Project with Miles Johnston, and um, of course, since Miles has had the Basis Project running since since about the early 1990s and um, it's just about 20 years old now of course he's been involved with amash with joanne summer scales that's now ended joanne's gone a separate way and um basically miles is doing the prod basis project on his own here's another little angle here of the the barge in and of course here's the boats along the the uh the avon kennet i think it's the avon kennet canal it's one of these canals yeah White horse over there. Oh look, see, yep, there's a there's a white horse. That's not an ancient one. I think that's a new one. But there's it's a white horse carved on the side of that hill. This is a crop circle country. Now I haven't seen any crop circles yet, but this is the place where they most often appear. It's all centered in this area. Uh, of course, it's crop circles appear across the world nowadays, but it's centered on this location. Um, anyway, so we're going to go into this conference because you've got some excellent speakers coming up. Tony Toppin, James Casbolt. I've, I've bumped into again. I've not seen him for a while. Is he? Oh, cool. And a few other people. Try and get some interviews with some of those people as time goes on. Anyway, see you in a bit. Oh dear, the weather's not too good now. Um, I'm just sort of having a... Just stepped outside here. Um, as you can see, there's the, there's the canal. Um, just saw Tony Toppin doing his speech. And that was quite interesting. He was talking about something he called the Bock Saga. And it referred to a guy from Finland called Eil Bock. And um, what this guy apparently has done is he's written down an ancient um, system of um, mysticism, alchemy, and sacred geometry, uh, which apparently has been handed down through his family for generations from ancient times. And uh, it's really quite a lot to take in, but um, it refers to the fall of Atlantis and things like that. Um, that was really interesting, Tony. Um, Tony sort of. Hopefully, I'll get an interview with Tony later on. Um, those are the guys from Channel 4. I'm just going to show you this, this ceiling now. This is really amazing. Um, oh, look. There's a. Yeah, it's a cow being levitated. And up there. Is, is the flying saucer. It's obviously picking it up. Um, this is the most amazing mural I've ever seen, and a Stonehenge. Now, if you, if you come in the barge, um, there used to be a pool table here, but they, they've changed it now. Yeah. It's, it's got a... Uh, there's these hills, those are the hills around, surrounding the, the... This is like a view you would get from here anyway, from so cloud like over there. And um, look at these crop circles. There's a, the DNA crop circle. Where is that? That one, that came out a couple of years ago. That one. Okay. Um, I can, but I can't remember. They had new ones on. It's time. Yeah. Right. That was just just a short distance from here. Okay, right. yeah, mo most crop circles appear in this. In this area. Yeah, in this area. And there is the pub itself. In the corner, and it's Stonehenge. Yeah. You see here. And there's uh, the Julia Set crop circle. And the glass in, is that, no, that's Silvery Hill. There's a little constellation above it. It's magical. More so, another stone circle. And there's the Spider-Man crop circle. A lot of these quite famous crop circles. I look at the ceiling. Oh, wow. A little chair over there. And, and 
I've got to get a bit further away to actually see this properly. So I'm just gonna... You see there, um, that's the Barbary Castle crop, crop circle there, yeah, and... Wow. The moon, the sun, it's like a kind of... The sun. Oh. You've got to come and see this for yourself. It's, it's in the barge in here on this street. And is there own uh, Oh, you're going to have. Oh, you, is this it? Is this the alien abduction yes. one? Is it alien abduction ale? It's oh. like spring break or something before you yeah. fill in the castle. Yeah. Probably a green crew. Oh. Green yeah. <laughs> Do you want to say a few words for Panwell TV? Who are you and what are you doing here? My name's Johnny Negman. Ah, yeah. Um, an old mate of mine. I've come down to check out what the base is about, especially as I'm from Bracken, and there's supposed to be bases in Bracken underground, mm. some which I know about, and some which are more elusive. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll that's, see what happens. This is the place. You come to the right place, Johnny. Yeah, John, we've, Johnny and I have met before, we've been to several other events before, but um, yeah, there's been it's, it's some. It's quite disturbing because you've heard about um, the, the two young people who went missing and turned well, up. Well, that's the thing, because. I read about that and we heard about it a couple of years ago and you think oh, it's a load of rubbish and certain things connected with it and then certain things have come to light recently which they all poking about. And That's I right, yes. Looked into it and things, so some things do seem as if there is something there and other things don't. So mm. The human mutilation cover up on Rich Planet TV. Yeah. yeah. That's this quite something. This information, so it's interesting to see. Which is the disinfo, which is the info. It's sometimes hard to tell them apart, you know. But, um, this is, this is, uh, I think if we're going to find the answer, we'll be here. Yeah. I mean, there's the... Same thing, but Peasmo, you know. Yeah. I mean, as, you as saw you know me. from your little exploits around there. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to, I've, I, I, yeah. I, I found it very, very difficult to get any solid evidence of what I'm looking for. I mean, there's some elements, I think, that make it look like there is evidence. Yeah, but that's um, the most surprising thing. You, you, you think it's all this information and then you suddenly find it a bit which are yeah. valid. And you yeah. think, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> this may not be a load of... <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> a load of anyway. That's right. Yeah. Here is Honey Street Ales Croppy. Fruit and vulture. And this is... I think this is um, four or five different yeah. ales. This is the alien abduction one, which is... Um, let's have a look. Oh, they haven't got one here. <laughs> but there is an alien abduction ale. And an area of 50 bucks. Have they got five of them? Have they? I'll have to have, I'll have, to have, a, I'll have, to have some of that myself. <laughs> This is this green alien abduction ale. Is that, is that the croppie or the...? That's, that's the alien abduction. Right. Keep out the light, a bit like a gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, um, I think there's Area 51 uh, croppie. I'm not sure which mm. one is in. I think they're on micro Oh, I'll have, have to try some of that, yeah. Cool. So this is our venue, this is our, our little auditorium. This is a brand new extension on the barge in. And um, from about quarter step. And this is our stage here. It's, it's not a big place, it's, I mean, we barely managed to squeeze everyone in, but um, there's nice pictures on the wall. And here's the, this is the camera that Matthew, Matthew there, the guy in the red t-shirt, he's the, he's the one filming it. And this here belongs to Channel 4. It's a lot more posh. My goodness, look at that. My eyes are watering, everyone. I've got camera envy. I feel inadequate. And there's Tony, I'll be having a word with him. I like these new logos that have come out, like, um, the basis project logos are these, that one, and that one, I must say, I, that, I prefer this one, I prefer the, the someone, someone was joking on Facebook, it looks like an alien sticking his head out of a rabbit hole, yeah. and I or just, it's the, uh, it's the sewage, sewage, um, inspection uh, expert, yeah, but I mean, the thing is, what I said was, and how do you know it's a rabbit hole? It could be something else, you see. I, I quite like that, I think that's good. It's better than the hand. I mean, the hand's a bit, it's a bit, the hand that hand fits a bit cliche. It could, but it could, be, it could, be, the, could be the alien leaving Uranus. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's Matthew, Matthew's our, uh, doing the filming today, Matthew Williams. That's a good t-shirt you got on there, mate. Yeah. Nice, nice one, nice one. You know, Matthew, Matthew's been on lots of, uh, 
Lots of TV things. You got you've got a YouTube channel as well, haven't you? I have indeed. Yes. What's that called? Uh, that's called Circle Makers TV, and uh, well, it's just me, Truth Seeker Six Six Six. Right. Which makes me sound like I'm into something dark, but it's not that at all. Oh, good. I'm sure you're not. Although Matthew does make crop circles, and you used to. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know I haven't seen any yet. <laughs> I mean, I was driving along, I haven't seen any yet. Not yet. Yeah. No, no. There's one little one, uh, but you know, we just don't know how many they're going to be this year because um, a lot of the big guys who have been doing it for many years have decided that they're going to go off and do other things. So they're making sand circles. All oh, right. Yeah. That's a cool. cool. So, well, you know, it doesn't mean that it's not going to be any, it just means that maybe somebody else will come in and pick up, but that mm. might mean crappy circles at the beginning. Mm. Or, you know. Somebody else, or something else? Well, yes, of course, you know. You never know. Everybody says, well, if, if Matt and Co are saying they're not making them anymore, then anything that turns up must be alien. Well, it could be. Yes. Gives <laughs> <laughs> a good hey, excuse to them then, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is, this is a, it's all right. No, this, is, this is a nice little... It's quite cosy in here, it's quite yeah, nice. It's like, it's been yeah. Out of this bit, yeah. Uh, with a, even better because that bit out there mm. is massive and that's going to be like a dance area mm. and they can have an art gallery out there so these talks are going to be in a bigger area. Brilliant, yeah. yeah. And we, we, we've barely got enough room in here actually and it's, but it's, it's, it's working, it's nice, we're having a good time. And this will be the first ever people to use this room, this new, this new development here. Yeah. Well, uh, um, these are like old church pews, so but yeah, yeah. they're a bit... Um, Hard on your ass. I'm using my jacket there to, uh, as a cushion. Yeah. I think probably uh, better to just have chairs in here for you know these sorts of events. But you know. yeah. Yeah, not bad. Nice little room. Okay. And of course the reptilian theme. Oh yeah. We've got the reptile. Yeah. The, the, Watch out, you know. The Illuminati are here, they're keeping their eye on us. This, this is just to remind us that they're keeping their eye on us. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Well, Matt, thanks for being on FanWo TV. And um, Matt here is part of the crew. I am too, see. Look, I've got my name there, just in case I forget it. <laughs> and I'm press, see, I'm, I'm actually part of the press. I'm a credited press card. I've never had one of those before. Anyway, see you later. Really, really mucky. Well, here we are where we're at. We're still at the barge. Um, the weather's improved slightly, we're getting a nicer view of those beautiful hills in the background. And I'm here with an old friend of mine, I've not seen for a while, but um, he is actually Tony Topping. He's a fellow host on the Planet X radio show as well. well was, was, yeah. Hopefully we'll be again one day. Yeah, now, uh, Tony, you've just given a very... Uh, sorry, should we go around here a bit? This is, we've got motorbikes as well. Uh, uh, motorbikes revving up. Uh, you've just given a very interesting talk on a subject I've never heard before. But yeah. um, what was that about exactly? Well, the, the subject is about is about something called the Box Saga, which is the the ancient um, the ancient history and creation of man from its origins in Scandinavia. Uh, and the Box Saga relates to the Bok family and the bloodline of the royal house of Asa. Mm. Uh, and what it was as well, I, I was feeling a little tricky with it really because the basis conference is about UFOs. So my, my the trickiest job for me was to get across the link between mm. UFOs, the subconscious collective, the oppression. Now these are these are easier than you I tend to think these things are quite easy because yeah. These things are all linked, I think. They're, they're, they're all linked, but it's getting it its getting it over to people in a way that doesn't overload them uh, and in a way that doesn't sound uh, cranky to them. You know, you've got to have a cranky to them. I'm trying to look for it. In a way that doesn't overload them, I think, is what we're, yeah. what we're aiming for, really. Yeah, in, a, in a way, I'm slightly... No, I was just slightly kicking myself now because I, it really maybe should have been a talk on UFOs, but they were more than happy with it because they could see the yeah. link, which is what it's about. I think it went down very well. Yeah, it did, I mean, it did, people yeah. were quite interested in that. Yes, yeah. I perhaps doubt my mm. abilities, I think. It, but it, it linked very nicely into the higher consciousness and, yeah. and the links with the UFOs and the alien NHE stuff, you know. The yeah. Person. So, I mean, this 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 is... See, when I first started hearing this, it, I mean, it, when I, when the, you started your speech, I was listening, it, it sounded like something like, a bit like almost like the Da Vinci Code. Where there's this yeah. family or this bloodline. Yeah, you're not wrong. And um, yeah, you're not wrong. So this 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 this, this guy Bok, Io Bok. Yes. He's, he's the most recent member of the bloodline, is he? The, the Bok family bloodline. Mm. Yes, yes, he is. But what is this guy from Finland? Comes from uh, yeah, comes from Finland. But what is interesting? You've got the Rosette family in England and the War of the Roses, where the research on it is tenuous. You've got Tolkien and his links to the to the Lord of the Rings and the Ring. Oh, of Power. I always knew, I always thought that guy knew more than yeah, than he, he let on. He knew, he knew more. The the one of the academics in there has coloured me to say that the Ring. That that I'm showing is not a he's not an ancient alphabet. I need to look at that because I think it possibly there's a possible uh, link between the two because I was reciting from that alphabet. So I need to look very carefully at what what's going on because it it should be a real should be a runic alphabet and there's some there's some English letters that are stolen from uh, Germanic language and Uralic language and yeah. 
it all pins down to the rock language. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of a lot of languages use this script. I mean, it's, the, it's called the Latin script. Yes. But it uh, doesn't mean it, Latin was, may not necessarily be the first language sure, to use yeah, it. Yeah, that's but, something uh, like the, the rock yeah. language means root language, which yeah. relates to the delivery of this language when there was a global disaster called All the Land is Ice, according to the Vox Saga. All oh, right. And root language, all languages of the world, I'm told by from research, if you study the ancient extinct root language or mm. rock language, you'll understand. Yeah, and I mean a lot of the a lot of the um, a, a lot of it, a lot of the, uh, the story that was, was in this box saga, which you outlined the basic story. It's quite a perennial theme: the idea of the fall of man from a higher state of consciousness yeah. and high civilization yeah, yeah. to a low, is, where, yeah. which involves things, which all the problems we have in the world today, the, the violence, the environmental destruction, the injustice, the suffering, things like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this, of course, is, in, in one sense, is part of what you find in the Bible with Adam yeah. and Eve, things like that. Although it has, you, you do indeed. It has a particularly just Judeo-Christian element to that. But, yeah, oh, yeah, mm. I, would, I would say so. There is a link, there is a link between the, the subconscious collective and it being invaded in some way. Uh, the Americans discovered that link, I think, in 1950 mm. with the Collins elite, and there was up to, they were definitely onto it. Mm. Definitely, sir. Uh, I've heard Nick Redfern talking about that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. something because that does connect UFOs very yeah, distinctly. It, it, connects it, it connects it quite well, actually, because you've got mm. you've got the um, you've got the situation of the UFO air war, but what you've got is the fascinating the organisations involved, which was the you know, Air Force, the Army, and at the time other organisations who actually zoned in on the fact that somebody somewhere via a cult ritual was triggering these situations, mm. which is what's happening. I mean, today, if you look at any of the research, the mainstream research, David Icke and all that kind of thing, there's some type of bizarre kind of control of the subconscious collective, which is what you'd want to do if you were controlling something. You wouldn't want it in main view. No. You'd want it behind the scenes, wouldn't you? You wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't want to put it in main view of everyone. Certainly not. You know? No, definitely. And no, that's absolutely t true. And um, this guy, um, I mean, it's very, very fascinating you started talking about pyramids all over the world yes, because right. the pyramids in Scotland now Richard D Hall has just announced on his TV show that he's discovered or not he didn't discover it but he's investigating a pyramid in South Wales yes. which is buried they're all across Britain they're, they're actually all across mm. Britain and the thing what is interesting about the box saga and the ring of power and the uh, and the you know the the root language and the house of Asher is this ancient civilization and knowledge and its genetic memory is surfacing it's beginning to surface. Mm. It's like water. It won't be stopped. To try and stop it, it won't be stopped. Mm. The, the, the only worry is the concern um, from that viewpoint of something called the third Ragnarok or a third destruction coming up upon us. That's very worrying. Um, mm. And that's something that the UFOs and the, you know, what goes on around us seem to know about. Yeah. They seem to know something about that. They seem to have a forward view in time of what's happening and what's coming. Yeah, this is an often, this is another theme uh, that often occurs in mythology, uh, which is that uh, the fall of man, which will is, will is a temporary situation and will be relieved, but there will be some kind of tribulation which could result in either destruction or enlightenment. Yes, that, that's, that's absolutely... Um, that's you get this absolutely. in all kinds yeah, of mythologies. You do, and there's an important and crucial thing in some history books. Where is it now? There's a famous philosopher, ancient philosopher, who indicated that the time of Atlantis... Now, and just for your listeners and what viewers, the time of Atlantis was not a location, but it was mm. a, uh, a situation that occurred called All the Land is Ice. Uh, the, 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 the other suggestion coming in is in the area of the Crimea. Uh, there's areas in the Crimea where they think Atlantis may have been. Where's mm. the ancient civilization there as well? Well, that's that interesting, bearing, yeah. doesn't it? On yeah. what's going on today? Because there's this, there's this war being fought in Crimea, and of course there was yes. wars in the past have been fought there oh, as well. Yeah. You know, in, yeah, yeah. in the late 19th century, there's a big indeed, war there. Indeed, and indeed, I mean, if you look, if you look, Ben, at the uh, the incident, I saw it on Russia Today of one of the Russian diplomats, and the one of the ambassadors, the American ambassador, is leaning over him and taunting him, and you cannot help but think, as an ordinary person, a member of the public, is that individual under some sort of mind control? Yeah. Well, we were told we, exactly. Yeah. Well, we yeah. what came up in the Q and A was. It was Adolf Hitler and him oh, being under some oh, kind of... Oh, yeah. He certainly was. Yeah. He was absolutely terrorised. And, and, and we don't do this as a joke, Ben. We don't do this work no. as a joke. It's dangerous. Yeah. It's dangerous work, you know. Very much uh, so. And, I mean, I mean, Hermann Rauschening, who was Adolf Hitler's secretary, yeah, yeah, has, yeah. has stated for the Red School that, this, that, that he knew him better than anyone. And he said he was. He used to have nightmares. He used to have visions. Oh, he, will have. he was completely and utterly possessed. He, he, and, will, and, he will have. Because you have a subconscious collective mm. that is kind of like separate from three-dimensional space-time happening. 
You yep. do, definitely do. And if he yeah. and it's the chance that he's not the only person in world history who has been possessed in this way. Uh, or, or, yeah. Well, the, the question is, Ben, is how it got there, because it's very ancient. What we're talking about is a very ancient thing that's lurking around us that we don't see, mm. and it is as ancient as the hills. Uh, the question not is, I suppose, from my point of view, is not how, uh, but the question is why now. Yeah. That's the question why. Yeah. Um, you know. Well, this is why I've wondered. These forces of darkness. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I've talked a lot about their what they do. It's obvious what they do. I mean, why they do it is another question. I mean, why anyone anyone would want to do these things? You know, to control and destroy, control and destroy. It's it's it's, it's why it's not human to have no. those desires. No. It's not human. It's, it's not human. But there again, we cannot underestimate the fact that we are no angels as a human race. Mm -hmm. You only need to see the oppression today of, of human with human beings. We can be equally as nasty uh, and as vicious. Um, you know, it's no get out close to say that something non-human is causing it, but it's there. Yeah. That's the worry. It's there when you when you look at the cutting edge UFO research and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, it's there, Ben. Uh, yeah. There's no getting away from it. Definitely. Um, right. Well. Um, What's, what's your what's plans for next? What's, where will this work take you, do you well, think? Well, uh, the, the work's taking me into mainstream broadcasting at the moment. There is a, thing, a theme going on at the moment of people staying away from mainstream broadcast uh, and mainstream media, but I'm one of the individuals who, who doesn't stay away from it. Right. And, uh, is in the firing line, really. Well, good luck yeah, with that. Yeah, I think well, you'll I think need it. Yeah. Going on with Channel 4 next week, but that should all be up in the air. Yeah. Uh, but it's interesting, you know, I've been speaking to the crew from Channel 4, and uh, no, no disrespect to them, uh, but the researcher just asked me to do something that, that would make you look like a trick pony in front of camera. We don't mm. do that anymore. We're not yes. going there. So that's a bad sign. that issue out with her, and we know where we stand now. Good, good for you, yeah. Yeah. Because they are a bit. I mean, they're, they're in there now. Just, I mean, like I say, well, we'll be talking more about this in a minute. But yeah. they're not to be. We were a bit. We were a bit concerned anyway. But Tony Topping, thanks very much for being Thank on you, the, this no, report. No problems, and, um, We'll see. We'll go inside. We're going to listen to James or Michael, whatever his name is now. So, so I still call him James, James Casbolt, but he, he's Michael. And I That's the Channel 4 crew. Um, like I said, we've got Channel... F um, they're actually called Plum Pictures, and they are... Um, basically following us around now. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about this because uh, of um, everything we were talking about last week, what happened last year with the Amash project and, and con confessions of an alien abductee. Well, um, is history about to repeat itself? And my question, I suppose, is that we should be on our guard. I'm not going to denounce these people or stay away from them, but we should be on our guard of um, what sort of TV show they're trying to make. Because then um, they said they were going to be a good one, but they say it's going to be a good one, but they said that last time. So, uh, no, you're right, mate. So we'll we'll see what happens anyway. Area 51, real cider, juiced in Honey Street. There you go. I'm just having I'm just having a drink of that now. Mm. Mm. That's probably strong. It's got something alien in it, I swear. And there's another one. <laughs> I think it's just a normal one. Oh, that's that's, that's a windbreak. You know. But there's another one called... It is, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. There's one called Honest Alien Abduction Green Beer. Keep away from the light. And there's another one called Croppy. Let me just find the... Where do we get a Croppy? There we are, look. Croppy, it's good, isn't it? Anyway, I've come out. Um, I've come out with all the touring because um, Jeff, uh, Jeff Scott is doing his, his show, and I'll tell you what. Look, look who's gone in there. Look, I'll just show you. Mm. 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 see. They're all in there. The Channel Four guys. What's more? They went in there, I'll tell you, I'll go outside and I'll tell you a bit more. How long does it take three seconds? I'll bring my Area 51 outside a minute. I'm just open this door. It's yeah. raining again. I need, I need some peace and quiet. I'll tell you what happened, right? Um, it's raining again. Yeah. Um, now, Jeff, if you remember from the Amash conference, I'll put a link in the description box to uh, my, my um, review of the Amash conference last year in Nottingham. Um, if you remember the and the sorry the um, confessions of an alien up to tea, I did a review of that TV show. And if you remember, 
I was I, I was very annoyed at the fact that they sensationalised everything, especially to do with Jeff Scott and what his piece. And I'll tell you what, the moment Jeff put up the slide of the the human you know the human body where uh, and where they put in the rectal probes, he has a diagram of the human abdomen and where they insert um, probes into your rectum. The moment he put that slide up, the cameraman went in there, the director went in there, the guy with the long sound boom went in there. What they're doing, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I, I don't trust these people, and I'm going to sign a disclaimer saying I don't want to be, I don't want to be involved in their program. I really, I really don't. I think this is going to be another hit piece, and um, really, I, they're not to be trusted. And um, <sighs> you see, I wanted, I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt. I mean, it could be, as I said to the guy. I, I spoke to one of these guys, he's the sound man, I said to him, I said, look, you understand we're all a little bit cagey because the extremely poor quality of programmes... Sorry, someone wants to come through. So, come out to have a crafty smoke. Sure. Ah, oh, you've got one of uh, those. Programmes are made... Ever, they are, they're great, aren't they? Best cameras yeah. ever. I'm going to have to hide around. So, uh, yeah. Programmes, oh, yeah, it's a bit... A uh, programmes... Um, they're good, yeah, they, it, it's done me well for many years. Um, so, what was I, where was I saying, yeah. Um, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt, but I said to the sound man when I spoke to him, I said, um, you understand we're all a little bit cagey because of the extremely poor quality of programmes made on this subject in the past. If you make, and I said, if, you, if you, the programme you'll make is going to be good, then it'll be, it'll be an exclusive. Jeff, of course, is a my lab, he's a targeted individual, and he's just been explaining this various experience he had with uh, encounters with extraterrestrials and strange beings and strange people who've been harassing him, kidnapping him, fitting probes into him. Um, I can't really get in there now because the bloody camera people are there. And like I said, I don't trust these people. OK, so it's just the rain's easing off now. I'm just going to go back in. I'll finish off my Area 51 cider. Hmm. Hey, well, the... Uh, Rain has stopped, there's even a bit of blue sky and no chemtrails. Um, I've come out a bit early. I've just, I've just seen James Casbolt, uh, the um, super soldier and psychic spy and experiencer. Um, I've just uh, been listening to him. Um, I'm not, actually, he's, he doesn't... He, I just can't help calling him James Casbolt because that's how I know him, but he's, he's Michael Prince now, that's his name now. Um, according to him, Jack, James Casbolt was a... A pseudonym given to him when he was in the when he was adopted as a child after being in an orphanage in Canada. Um, his story is remarkable. I mean, I don't know quite what to make of it, but he was involved, as I've explained, when it comes to the uh, my expeditions to try and find evidence of the Peasmore base. That he is a um, he was used as an assassin, as a psychic spy, and other things out the Peacemore base. And as a child, he was actually um, ensconced at that base. Um, today, he's he's a very different kind of person. He's much less jovial than how I, he was when I first met him because I knew him years ago, from 2006 actually at the Probe Conference. Um, he's much more serious. He's had, he's had a wife and child, and his marriage broke up, and he's. He hasn't seen his kid for a while. They're in America, he's here. And, um... It's really, um... It's, it's hard to know what to make. He, he basically spoke about an episode in his personal life to do with his family and about, about how he is being himself is being targeted by another super soldier. Uh, Max Spears, a guy that's who's well-known, who often does his own speeches and things like that. Um... I don't know quite what to make of it, to be honest. It's, it's interesting stuff. Um, confusing. Very strange. But anyway, I'm out here at the, out of the barge in here. Very, very uh, charming location. And I think it's up in those hills. I'll be doing my sky watch tonight, I think. Yeah, up, up in those hills there. Like uh, Hackpen Hill and Milk Hill and places like that. Maybe go up to the White Horse. <laughs> So um, I will be making a film of that too. So, 
See you later. Really? Yeah. Hospital reporters, pride and dignity, stop the New World Order, and welcome to Panmo TV. And um, now I'm here, this is a special edition of the Panmo TV that I'm doing about the Bases at the Barge conference. And I'm here with the organiser and the man behind the Bases project, Mark <laughs> Johnston. <laughs> That's not him. With the dog in the back, right? <laughs> yeah. Want to eat yeah, we've got a dog. So, um, Miles, so tell us about, about this event that we've just done and um, what you've been Well, it's been a long event. Originally, this was scheduled for Bob and Manor uh, on the 27th, same day. And then Bob and Manor was baited by Barclays Bank, allegedly, and a bunch of other people. And all 42 properties of the said owner were allegedly taken from him for Jewish practices by him. In other words, he was winning too much using the common law thing. Oh, right. <coughs> and so they, it would appear, decided to uh, basically, we don't care about the rules, we write them, we don't need to obey our own rules, we'll just take what you've got. Allegedly. Yeah. So I cancelled the whole event. And I thought, well, the idea was to have a taster, just, just to get the ball rolling for the real conference I'm holding on 8th, 9th and 10th of August. Because that's actually important. It's in a proper venue. Not that this isn't a proper venue, but it's like real money and my knee bumps on seats. Yeah. And it's actually, let's grow up and do something proper after 20 years. Mm -hmm. so, we'll be uh, discussing, Mark, we're going to be discussing this in a future um, Critical Mass Radio show as well, because uh, Miles and I are going to be on that Panmo show, talking more about this event that's upcoming. But uh, this event today, therefore, is. Uh, did it go ahead eventually? It, it was a form. rescheduled mm. at the last minute type of a thing because the very nice landlord here, he's just started things. But we've got to uh, put the barge in contact. Barge is a wonderful old pub, it's been going for 300, 400 years? Something 400 years. Anyway, in recent years it's been completely refurbished. It's had its good days and its bad days. And recently it hasn't had really a great deal of tremendous thing, so the previous landlord basically, you know, chucked it in. Yeah. And we got a brand new one. And, um, but what's been going on since the rebuild is this whole new section. Yeah. Made of green, I think it's called green oak. Mm. In other words, it's oak that hasn't uh, been sort of stuck in a factory somewhere and dried. It's sort of built and it's maturing and breathing as it settles. Oh, nice. So this is done about two years ago, I think we've built maybe two years, and, it, and now two years later it, we're finally in this section. And you'll see the dowels, because it's not held together with big steel bolts, it's held together with dowels, mm -hmm. and that's you know, wood, you know, oak, so it's built in the old style, the old ways of doing things, and it's frankly Lovely. It is lovely. I showed you this earlier on in this film and it was really, really it's a, lo a lovely little room. We're the first people to use it. It's so, great. to my right, there's a big, you know, uh, entry bay and there's a whole lot of stuff. In a new pub, there'll be a whole different bar, but also art gallery and all sorts of stuff. Maybe they'll have conferences there, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But as a little mini taster, when the new landlord said, hey, why don't you use this? I said, yes. And immediately said, right, base at the barge. Yeah. I thought that was yes. good. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, James Caspol, who's never sp uh, spoken before, and who's going to come and see him. And they brought in a couple more. We're hoping to have Kathy Morgan, uh, but she's away in Ireland. Um, and there's a few speakers, have a nice thing on Sunday, and it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was. So we had some really, really interesting speakers today. Uh, so speakers. I then, uh, because I've been down to St. Ives and actually shot an interview with. Uh, because of the extreme controversy of what he's been saying online. I, because I interviewed him a long time ago, and I've done him several times since, I needed to round off Basis 24, which is what other people said about him. Allegedly, you knew, knew him. Yeah. But a lot of that's in storage, so I decided to put a little bit out of the interview, and he mentioned uh, a certain person, because I was going to be speaking at the Super Soldier Summit, the third Super Soldier Summit in Las Vegas. But the very fact that I got all these phone calls from people saying, oh, don't go on the interview James Caspol. Oh, don't, don't talk to him. It'll ruin you, destroy you, whatever. Well, that's like a red line to a bolt. So I went down there with Kathy Morgan <laughs> and spent yeah. two days down there. It was a long trip down to St. Yeah. So we did that, and that'll be part of Basic 24. 
because what he said in context, basic 23, was all about bloodlines and a whole lot of stuff, and it was very controversial. So I needed to have something which would somehow answer that. And that's mm -hmm. the whole point of doing it. Mm -hmm. Now, since I did the, a lot of the interviews with Basic 24, he's been thrown out of the States uh, for various reasons, which he's described a couple of times. And I don't want to talk about him all the time, but that, that was yeah, ultimately it. But so, ult uh, so ultimately, we had Tony Topping, uh, who came here today, and he has been doing research. Tony Topping is a very targeted individual. There's an awful lot of stuff he's not telling people. Uh, or he may have said something about today for the first time, mm -hmm. but he really is getting attacked, or, uh, or you know, his life's really suffering. Yeah. Oh. And he's been targeted by you, he's been stalked by people, yeah. and um, he's, he's, he's a guy who's been around for a while on the yeah, I, I, I mean, Tony Topping is what we would call mainstream uh, in terms of UFOs. He's been on the BBC Conspiracy Boss thing, and you know, he's the sort of you know, guy that you would have on an ordinary TV programme, and he says things, but he's never said a lot mm -hmm. of stuff that he says in private about the targeting and stuff like that. Yeah. But he's presented this thing about the saga which is about an energy, a life force energy, which like water, as he says, will permeate through any leak or rock eventually. You, know, you can't contain it, it'll, it'll work. Yeah, that's okay. Now this connects quite strongly with this stuff on the black goo, whatever the black goo is. Uh, so there's going to be David Griffin talking about another report from him on that at the conference. Yeah, that would be interesting to see, because he's David Griffin some sort of been off the circuit for a while, but... Um, well, David Griffiths has been having an awful lot of encounters and experiences himself, and we're trying, he's been trying to use cameras to capture some of this, but uh, the cameras will work, or it's not a phenomenon, you can't pick up on ordinary cameras or whatever, but he's he's going through quite a, a major ch you know, encounter and change. But after the uh, Confessions of an, of an Alien Abductee program, the car, car wreck of a program, yeah. I call it, Virtually nobody in the UFO community in this country wants to touch alien abduction or anything like that. So, uh, I am using the basis thing to get raw data. Whatever comes, comes. I don't often go after people. They sort of come up. And um, I do want to get a balance away from the James Caswell thing. But the thing is that um, uh, Channel 4 suddenly turned up uh, about three days ago to be doing another documentary and this is a different mm -hmm. company which I don't think we can say but anyway <laughs> yeah I don't think we can say uh, but they're doing they're doing a uh, what's called a presenter led factual programs on and today they're going to they've done it on UFOs they've, they've come here to get some pretty pictures interview people at a different venue other than whatever they've been doing already and uh, they were not coming then they were coming and then they did come and uh, they got some pretty pictures of around here probably maybe end up 90 seconds on the actual edit mm. but uh, they've interviewed a few people i think they did did you no no they didn't they did jeff scott um, they did jeff, jeff scott. scott's another interesting chap because he um, jeff scott has had a lot of these experiences he's been on the bases he's been in plan that he showed the triangle mark thing he's had his experiences mm -hmm. and he also claims to be a reptilian and he's on the good side and he told me that uh, the lovely Joanne Summerscales told him, confessed to him, that she was a dinoid raptor. Mm. You know, reptilians amongst reptilians type of thing. <laughs> Hello, I'm a dinoid raptor. Mm. Who are you? <laughs> so was, look at my light bonny tail swooping its way behind me. Unquote mm. on the phone. He told me not on the phone. He would not repeat it on camera. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, so Jeff had quite a lot of experiences and uh, he's got a lot to say and uh, it was good to be able to give him a chance to do that today. Yeah, he's standing up on stage, very modest and easy going chap. Doesn't not look into sensation and fame and fortune at all. So that's, I just, just want to get on with his life. Yeah, contrary to what skeptics always say. Now, um, and another thing that's going to happen with the event in August is going to I'm going to be involved in this because we're having a live, oh, a live radio broadcast. A live radio broadcast, just like in the good old pirate days. Yeah. Well, this is a. Uh, uh, see, when people, when people go to conferences at the weekend, they're already going there on Friday, so why mm. not have something for them? Mm. So the idea is to have an event which allows them to sort of 
drive in and come. They don't, they're not missing really anything and they don't get there, mm -hmm. but they can then come to the event, see where it is, and see the live thing. And that'll be going on from, I think, six till eight. And then we're possibly, probably going to have Simon Parks. Uh, so we're not too sure, because we're also having a night walk that night mm -hmm. with uh, David Griffin and my webmaster, Paul. They're going to have night vision stuff, and they've got a basic here at the barge, so they can basically people can arrive here from the Marlborough Conference, and um, then the idea is to run up to Nap Hill, a quick just run up the hill, so it's convenient and easy, and set up their stuff. And if it's a clear night, have a good time watching them. That's it's a perfect place to go. I'm yeah. going to not nip up there myself. And it is going to be when the Perseids are going to be coming. Mm -hmm. The shade will be coming. It's a lovely dog oh, nice. Yeah. And. Um, That'll be a good thing. Now there has been a number of UFO events before this. There's good keeper mentioned I think about an infrared video of entities and things happening, about encountering things. And when I was talking to uh, my, my colleague who helped produce this, uh, Matthew Williams, um, mm. because Matthew was involved with the original basis of investigation of Barry King, so it's sort of fitting to have it all together. Mm. And uh, also having James Caswell here standing in public, being you know available to questions to people can actually challenge him and directly answer back. So I hope a few people did do that. I because I was running around didn't yeah. see the Oh they did, yeah. And the QA there was a lot of people who asked him so I mean when he's yeah. gonna say what he's saying, it's time someone says, excuse me, but that's box. <laughs> yeah. And really don't really what do you want, you know? Mm. And that's an opportunity, and he stood up for that opportunity. And you know, in all due credit, he could have come here and been Max. You know? Yeah, he's, he's awesome. Now, we special. were expecting Max Spears. Max Spears is uh, another super soldier, mm. which uh, I only encountered only met him at the Super Soldier Summit last year. But it was it, it was it was quite interesting to see two British mm. people with a very similar story to tell, uh, who were in the states and uh, we're talking the same sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, very interesting that once James got to talk here, you know, Michael is the first we call Michael Prince, that Max did say he was going to turn up. Now Max, I could feel, was fading quite heavily on mm -hmm. actually doing this. His girlfriend, Rachel, only flew in yesterday, but he's only in this country because of being uh, dead in the family. Yeah. And who knows maybe I'll see it next week, I don't know. Well, this is all something to look forward to. So if people want to come to, to buy tickets for the upcoming conference, yeah, the, they it's, a, it's, a, it's basically Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 8th, 9th and 10th of August, and it's uh, PayPal, it's a tenner for the Friday, 25 quid for Saturday, 25 quid for Sunday, mm -hmm. or 60 quid for all three days. That's pretty good for three days, isn't it? And quite honestly, 60 quid is worth just turning up on Friday to see you and of the wonderful Sarah That's do the broadcast. Are we doing the IRA? Yes, it's well. <laughs> Just seeing you do the live broadcast is the only thing that's really mm. worth coming from. That will be, you'll be laughing your heads off for weeks over that, I'll tell you. It'll be so I, 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 mean, I, don't, I don't really know what the format's going to be, but maybe maybe if there's experiences turn up and they have a story to tell. Yeah. Whatever, well, they can, they can maybe discuss. It'll be very similar to the one we did, um, you know, with Bill Bilderberg. It'll be yeah. rather a Bilderberg fringe one live broadcast yeah. there. And um, it'll, be, it'll be really entertaining. And the venue is, is it Marlborough College? It's Marlborough College, and um, it's the, I think, Ellis Theatre there. It's a proper lecture theatre mm. with, with, you know, um, you know a, stack, a stepped, stepped audience. Nice. Yeah, that and uh, we'll be setting up there from, from five o'clock. So maybe even while the radio thing's going, we'll be setting up a few things. Brilliant. And I got these wonderful banners made. Yeah. Our new logo. We've got four of them. Yeah, that's it. And, uh, and if you, I don't know if you get that at the bottom here. There's another one there, yeah. I've, uh, this is from the original drawing by Barry King of stage one of a programmable generated life form. Yeah. And the key difference to this is the round eyes. Mm -hmm. So these are allegedly man made, in, in, licensed under the greys of their plumes. In a place called Piggy's Moor. Yeah. Where and, you, where you and that's one coming out of a, it's coming out of a hole. That's actually been pulled out of the maturation chamber, no. allegedly stage one, which is about a month. Yeah. So that's and a very good, it's a very good symbol. So that design has been redrawn and mm. made into a logo by Miriam. 
And my friend Miriam has come up with this wonderful new logo, which uses the original Irish hyperdimensional spiral. And then we've got wonderful colours coming from it, indicating sort of a higher spectral range of frequencies and thought and stuff. So that's, that's, that's that. Oh, very, very nice. So um, there's a website, the website you go to is... Thebasisproject.org. Thebasisproject.org. And Please. Paul, my webmaster, was here and he's got his own night vision stuff and he'll be very keen to start sharing that up at the Nap Hill yeah. car park. Mm. Okay, I'll, be nip I'll be nipping up to Nap Hill myself later this evening. And I don't think the weather's going to be very nice. No, I don't think so. It's a bit rainy. But the, mm. uh, the main thing is that um, Paul has actually got hold of a zap checker. Mm. Now, zap checker is a meter with an analog scale which shows, you know, left, right, something going on. And they're advertised for about $109, $120, two versions. Uh, and they operate in a frequency range which appears to be exactly right for so-called alien implants in people. Mm. Now, who puts these things in is another thing, but the thing is this will actually pick up easily a signal, a massive signal in relative terms, you know, zero to off scale. Uh, I don't know how many microvolts it is or whatever. Mm. But the point is you, you can see clearly that there's something in somebody. Yeah. And that was first demonstrated by Matt Todd, I think in basis four. I know Matt, yeah. I know uh, Matt. With a guy called Dave Marrow who could have been here today, but it was interesting when he went across Dave Marrow's back, whatever was there moved. Mm. Now this is what happened with Marie Kayali yeah. when they tried to take the when they did take the implant out of her knee, whatever was there moved. And they actually had to go on. She got this huge scar. It's very strange when that but happens. But even yeah. though with Marie, um, whatever alleged implant was physically removed, it does respond. I mean, when we did the implant scan with her in mm. the UFO Congress last year, her knee really swelled, swelled up ap afterwards, and also her jaw, where yeah. she had two very serious dental operations to remove something in her teeth. Yeah, I mean, I've some. Paul was actually using that zapper on one of the yeah. people here and today. It, it tested positive on Very. Facebook and it tested positive on Jeff's Yeah, job. And he used me and a couple of other people as a control and we, none, not, we, we didn't experience anything. So yeah. it sounds so, like this I is mean, a very, very this is a strong very reading. Simple, fairly crude instrument. But the thing is that now that people know that you can use it to detect implants, it's all the web pages are still up there in various, you know, um, sellers in the, United, in the United States. You just have to get it from the States. And um, it's still up there. All, all the details are still up there. And you, even the pay button is still up there. Once you hit the pay button, forbidden. You're not allowed to buy it. It's not Ooh. available anymore. That's some pretty amazing. Phone up, actually telephone, the United States. That, uh, they say it's not available. It's not available anywhere in the continental United States. Well, that is very, very strange so indeed. So the fact that Paul was able to get one today it's pretty damn unique. Yeah, that's that's rather strange. Very strange indeed. So very it's simple just, device. It's just an RF meter which happens to work in the 1.5 to 25 megahertz range, mm. and it just happens to be able to pick up these implants in people. Yeah. I mean, there's other frequency ranges and energy signatures and low frequency, high frequency you can use, but these things are a simple hundred dollar. There it is. You've got something. Yeah. That's as crude and as simple as you can get. Yeah, and um, obviously somebody doesn't want people detecting these implants. Someone who yeah, knows what exactly. they are, the kind of just um, so happens that very radio. Meter, and then if you buy other very expensive meters, which may cost you several hundred pounds, the very frequency range that that zap meter uses is not available. I see. So it, it, it measures for every other radio signal, but not this one. Yeah, I can. There's, there's, there's a whole pile of instruments you can buy. And they measure way low frequencies, way high frequencies, up to one and a half megahertz, and other ones who measure up to five gigs, and mm. all sorts of probes and meters and dials and everything else, but not in the 1.5 to 25 megahertz range. Mm -hmm. Well, Miles, do, do you think, before we go, I just wanted to ask you, do you think that the basis project and the rest of it and everything else that you, I and a lot of other people are doing is actually having an impact. Do you think it's actually working? Are we getting this word out and we're declassifying it? Well, I think that's it? very important. The one thing that we've got to stop doing is preaching to the choir. And I think in many respects, with AV5 coming up with um, Ian Crane, I think he basically stopped doing AV because he had the same audience coming. He wasn't yeah. getting any new people. And this is the whole crucial thing about the people's voice about all these conspiracy programs and Alex Jones and David Icke and 
you know, a, a writ, you know Richard and uh, ourselves, you, you know, we're all in the same basic bracket. We're basically preaching to a bunch of people who already know about what's going on. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be successful, we have to do television on radio and media that communicates with people, which appeals to ordinary, everyday people. Yeah. And that means it's got to look like mainstream television. It's got to look and sound like it if you're going to be able to talk to these people and somehow get a message across. Yeah. Right. But John Irwin is of the opinion the, the way to do it is to have small groups starting to talk to important people who haven't quite taken the chip or the pill, so to speak, and um, influence quietly the back, the back way. Uh, that means talking to influential people or people who are going to be influential. But you'll find a lot of people who are in that bracket have already been exposed to something which has changed them quite mm. radically. Yeah. And that means you've got to communicate with people offline, off the internet, even letters. You've got to do it in the old ways. Yeah. And that takes time, quietly talking to people. But we do have this Google type mind mapping, mind hacking stuff where they are scanning and detecting your thoughts. And that comes up as a different color signature. And then they say, ah, he's thinking a different thing. Yeah. So we really are running out of time on this. Definitely, yeah. Let's uh, have to remember what happens remains to be seen. But please do get along to the Basis Project Conference this August. And uh, Miles Johnson, thank you very much for thank being you, on. Thank you, Ben. And thank you for a brilliant oh, day. By the way, uh, ben, ben is press. Right, he's important. Hey, right. uh, you've got the official. I've got a press card for the first press time in my life. <laughs> press accreditation yeah. is called. It's press accreditation. Yeah. A big long word. Don't know what it means. Yeah. Well, thank you for a really wonderful day. It's been thank great. You. Okay. And thank you, Hapanwo TV viewers, for watching. This has been Hapanwo TV at Bases at the Barge. It is April and it's 2014.